Hello and welcome to Marcela's Purse. I am Marcela. Today I have something different, which is this apron. And uh, as you can see, it's just a top with a skirt and a, a pocket at the front. It has here on the sides, it has a loop on each side so that I can, when I cross the straps at the back, I can pass each strap through the loop there and I can adjust the, the tightness as I want. My straps are quite long because I like to tie my apron at the front. Now when I let it loose it's quite easy for me just to pull the apron over my head without having to remove the straps from the loops or all the time. And here I have another one I made previously and in this case it, as you can see, I tied it at the front. And in this case, it has a different pocket, just a simple square shape that I stuck to the front. And um, I had a spare bit of ribbon, which I put along here around the belt. That's all the detail it has. And I should go to the kitchen and cook something delicious for my family. I recently made a strawberry cake. And thank you for being here. Keep watching if you want to make one of these. I have here a sketch to explain a little bit how to cut the fabric. So this will be my skirt and that's at the top. In my case, uh, mine will measure, I wanted to measure 33 inches wide by 21 inches drop. That's for the skirt. And the chest part will be 12 inches wide by 10 and a half. To that, to each piece, I will have to add some seam allowances. In the case of the skirt, on each side, I will add half an inch. And at the bottom as well, half an inch. So half an inch, half an inch, and half an inch. On the top, I will add an inch and a half. Now, widthwise, uh, I want to have four pleats, and each pleat will be four inches. So I have 33 inches width, which is the final measurement, plus one inch per fold. So it would be 33 plus four inches plus half an inch on each side makes an extra inch plus half an inch half an inch is one inch 38 inches all right so here is what i have already started doing i what i did i folded the fabric in half with wise to find the middle point which i mark there you can of course place the pleats anywhere you want if i have my sketch here roughly i want them uh, at the front a couple at the front just below the the chest and the other two where, wherever they fall so what i did so this is the middle of my fabric um i am measured towards the side about two inches again it's your choice two inches and then from there from that mark where I measure the two inches to the right I measure one inch so when I fold this I'm making these two marks match I shall put the pin you can see that the fold measures half an inch I hope that you can see there So that makes the one inch for each pleat. And uh, I already did some marking. From that pleat to the next one, I left four and a half inches. Just that was my choice, so you can do it differently. Four and a half inches, and then I move to the right to mark one inch, and there. 
I shall put another pin and I did the same towards the left so I have one two three four pleats and as you see I here on these two I already did some stitching just to keep them secure now on the side I will go to the machine of, of course and I will stitch them there in place so on each side and at the bottom, I did a fold, a double fold. So this is what I did. I folded a quarter of an inch and then another quarter of an inch and I stitch along. So that makes the half inch on each side and at the bottom that I had decided a seam allowance. So I have done the sides and the bottom so all I have to do now is to uh, secure uh, those pleats and I will be back. So I have secured my pleats there. Remember, you can of course obviously make the pleats bigger if you want, but just remember to adjust the measurement. So if you want the pleat, which is instead of being half an inch like it is here, if you want it an inch, Instead of having four inches, you will have eight inches to add to the width of your fabric. So keep those things in mind. Now, uh, I also folded, I have folded the fabric in half and I measured from, from the top down about six and a half inches because that's where I want to position uh, the pocket. You can, of course, change that depending on your height or your preference. You can pin the cloth around your waist and position your fabric pieces until you're happy with the, with the location of the pocket. So I have here two pieces for the fabric, uh, so, sorry, for the pocket. And the basic pocket would be uh, to put the right sides together. and a stitch from about here all the way around here leaving an opening so that you can turn the pocket right side out and once you have the pocket right side out iron it flat you will still have the opening here iron it flat you can do a top stitch there for decoration which is where the top of the pocket will be the opening and then just simply uh, sew it on top of the fabric of your skirt there and then sew the U shape for the sides leaving the top open and fold the row edges of your opening here and in doing so you will be closing the gap so that's the basic pocket now, but I want to do something different. I want to cut these pieces and round, round the, the bottom. So I'm just going to fold in half vertically. Hands free and I just eyeball it there. So that's the shape for my pocket. Now I want to add some detail to the pocket. So this is what I found. I have this lacy ribbon that could go like that. Or I have also this binding ribbon that I could put there on the top like so. But I was actually thinking of using both. You use the binding ribbon and put this lace detail on top. So shall we go for that? I also want to put some binding around like this, like so. 
So I am going to put the wrong sides together. And one of these sides will be the wrong side, the, the, the inside of the pocket. So I'm, I'm turning it around. It's the same fabric as you can see, only because I am recycling this material and it has this damage there and there. So if this can be the inside of my pocket. So I'm going to take the binding tape. In my case, it, it's just uh, under an inch wide. So remember, this will be the inside of my pocket and I am going to open the ribbon, line it around the edge, pin it like so, make it go all the way around following the shape of the pocket and I am going to, of course, using pins all the way around and I'm going to stitch along that fold. I have um, attached it, attached the ribbon, and I also trimmed the edge a little bit more, and I did those cuts around the round shape so that the fabric bends uh, more easily. Right, so I'm, I am going to then put this flat, so this will be the front of my pocket, and I'm going to fold the the tape as it is towards the front and I shall put some pins so I will just keep it pinned but again it's optional you can stitch close to the edge so you don't have the pins there anymore and I have here I have here a length of the tape which I am going to position in the same way. I'm coming to the back of my pocket and I will pin because I am going to stitch along this fold. And as you can see, the tape is a bit longer than needed because I am going to fold the end, the raw edge, like so. And I will stitch I will start the stitching from that fold so I don't have a raw edge there and I will fold this end as well towards the inside and I will be back okay I trim off here this edge a little bit so there it is so I am going to this is the front of my pocket yeah I removed some of the pins because I was hurting myself Okay, so I have this ribbon here that I want to attach. So I'm just cutting a piece longer than the top. So remember, we're here at the back. That's, that's the inside of my pocket. So I am bringing this. I am folding the raw edges at, at each end towards the inside, following the fold of the tape, bringing it over. And I should stitch along here. And uh, I want to attach this ribbon on top, so I shall, following again the folds of the binding tape, I shall put this there, pin it along, and sew from end to end to attach it close in that fold. I am leaving it a little bit longer at each end. It is attached and I am going to trim off but it's still a little bit longer because I want it to go like that when I attach it to the apron. So I have the skirt of the apron here. I have the marks there of the middle point. So I shall find the middle of my pocket and I shall put the pin so that I don't lose it there and I'm folding pressing with my fingers to create the crease and 
I already did the fold in the middle here, so I can see all the line of the fold indicating the middle of the skirt. So that's my middle, that's the mark, six and a half inches from the top. There, um, come in here. So I shall pin this, and I am folding here this ribbon there. And I will fold it there. So I will just simply go and top stitch from the top all the way around, close to the edge here. And I will be back. And I have my pocket attached. So now I am going to put this on the side. And this is my top the top piece and if I get my sketch again on each side I left the seam allowance of half an inch because like we did in the skirt I folded it a quarter of an inch and then a quarter of an inch again to get this seam this folded seam so that's on each side at the top, I wanted an inch, and, an inch and a half, and also at the bottom, an inch and a half. So half an inch, half an inch, one and a half, one and a half. We will work with the top seam later on. So what I will do now is to take the skirt part, and this is uh, the belt part of uh, the skirt, which is as long as my piece of fabric. Actually, because we did the pleats, you just have to make sure that it is at least a little bit longer, about an inch longer or two inches longer than the top of the skirt. So I have the top here. So this would be the top of the apron where the strap will be attached and this is the bit that goes attached to the skirt. So I have marked here the middle and this is the belt. I also mark the middle point there. So I am going to rest it on top. So middle of the belt in the middle of the of the top piece and right sides together and I am going to stitch along. So this is what I have. I have stitched it there and what I did, I ironed this. I ironed the edges, the long edges, about a quarter of an inch. I folded them because this eventually will go like this. So if I turn it right side out, you can see the belt part. So now I am going to take this skirt I still have the marks for the middle point, which I can see all the way here. If I push this back, there, that's my middle. So I'm pushing the belt towards the top, and I'm bringing the middle point to match the middle point there. And I am folding this over with the raw edge towards the inside, like so. So I am sandwiching the skirt onto the belt, but I am also pinning this so that I can attach the top, so the top is underneath. So there it is, in the middle where the belt is folded, flat. 
and I will pin. So I am pinning through the belt and I am also catching the top. So, so far that's, this is what we have. But if I bend it over this way, you can see that we still have the other edge. So I am going to fold this edge towards the inside, like so. So I don't have a lot of room in, on this table, but perhaps if I do it like this, you can see better. So this is what is happening at the back. That raw edge is being folded towards the inside. So I am continue to pin the skirt so that the edge touches the fold of the belt. I'm coming here towards the end. Now, as you can see, we have this raw edge here and we have it on the other side. So that's what I need to pin. I need to make sure that that is folded up and this one is folded up. Pin them because it is there where we will be doing some stitching later on. So you can feel with your fingers that the fabric underneath the edge is folded towards the inside. So this is what we have to do. We have to achieve that, but with the skirt in the middle. So you can see that I have pinned everything now. And the raw edge at the back is folded towards the inside. I am coming now to the end and as expected, it is too long, so I'm going to trim off around here. And uh, I'll take one of the tabs that I have ready made, which I made them, um, the dimensions are in the description box below the video. Just by folding the length in half, and then each half towards the middle, like so. And then like this, and I stitch along here and along there. And this is what I got. So I have two, one for each end. So I am going to put them here. So I am going to fold this. I shall get the strap, put it up, I am folding the raw edge as you can see, and I shall put this folded tab with the raw edges towards the inside, and I will sandwich it like that. This is a I will do the same at the other end. I will tidy up a bit more when I go to the sewing machine. But what I will be doing then, I will be a stitch across here, so I can catch the tab as well. And then I will stitch along here, along the fold, all the way to, towards the other end, and on top of the, of the top of the, a, the apron and I will stitch along here as well all the way. So this is what we have so far. We have the belt part attached, we have the end tabs and this is what it's looking like at the back. So this is what we have. We have the belt attached so now we have to attach the uh, straps in the same way I did the, the little tabs. I folded the fabric in half, I iron it lengthwise and each half towards the middle, folding the raw edges towards the inside, then like this, and then I stitch along each end 
so that we end up with something like this okay right I shall I'm just going to stitch the other strap and I will be back I have the straps here and here is the top of the apron I am putting it towards the wrong side and this is the extra seam we had left an inch and a half there so I, uh, I have folded a quarter of an inch down and then I fold it down by an inch and I am going to take one of the straps with the raw edge uh, I only uh, closed one of the, the edges so I have one raw edge here I am putting it here so that it touches the fold and it is matching the seam on the side with that top folded in so bring it down a little bit about a half an inch a quarter of an inch so put the pin and then I am going to move it up So if I turn it around, this is what we have. And um, I shall go and stitch, like so, making, I will top stitch where I already have a, a stitches there, and then across, and then I will come down, and then across, so that I can secure the, the strap in a square shape. So I can uh, stitch along those seams that I already have. And I will do the same with the other strap. And here is the, the finished apron. That's the square I did. And I did a top stitch there and another one here. So I was closing the gap at the back. This is what it looked like at the back. So our apron is finished quite a vintage look with this fabric I hope you have liked this tutorial something for home but thank you very much for being here don't forget to subscribe and I will see you soon bye